We have an extremely special dignitary with us to address us on the theme Peace in South Asia. I request the speaker for the evening, Admiral L. Ramdas, and the chair for the session, Geeta Sheshu, to kindly occupy your seats on the stage. The session, Geeta Sheshu is an independent journalist and media historian based in Mumbai. She has a keen interest in issues of media, gender, freedom of expression, and media ethics and has reported about these themes for close to 35 years. She has also coordinated the Free Speech Hub, an initiative of the media watch site The Hoot, to track freedom of expression in India. Admiral Lakshmi Narayan Ramdas served as the Chief of the Naval Staff of the Indian Navy from 1990 to 1993. During his 40 years of service, he has been awarded the Param Vishish Seva Medal, the Ati Vishish Seva Medal, the Veer Chakra and the Vishish Seva Medal. Admiral Ramdas has been a consistent voice of peace and reason in the political and military context of South Asia and has made stellar contributions to this end. For his efforts to denuclearize South Asia, he was awarded the Ramon Nagsase Award for Peace in 2004. Most recently, we all read about his appeal to the President of India for curbing escalation tensions in the aftermath of the attack on the CRPF convoy in Pulwama, and also his appeal to the Election Commission of India to prevent the misuse of the Indian Armed Forces for political propaganda in the wake of the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. He is here to speak to us as we are in the middle of an extremely tense military situation in the subcontinent on a theme he has held dear for decades, peace in South Asia. Savarkar wrote to all his followers, Hinduize all politics and militarize Hindudom and resurrection of our Hindu nation is bound to follow. If you think of what he said, this is exactly what is happening. This is exactly what we are seeing today. And uh, in just about you know, the last few weeks we have seen these drums of war, the kind of militarization that has blatantly taken place and has crept up on us perhaps and is, is like a juggernaut today. So uh, where, do we, where do we even begin to talk about something like peace in South Asia? There is a, a scenario which we see today where the drums of war are being beaten very, very loudly on nighttime television. And if it was confined to those television studios, I don't think you know, one would have such a huge problem as to understand that it spills over onto the streets. And the kind of inflammatory and incitatory, inciting comments that, uh, that have resulted in the, the way in which uh, Kashmiri students have had to literally leave from their, uh, uh, their uh, 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 educational institutions, where last week a Kashmiri trader was beaten up in Lucknow, and where not just the Kashmiris, but anyone, any single person who speaks in any manner which is seen as dissenting or seen as contrary to this kind of very predominant narrative, is demonized. So there is this rampant and very, very uh, blatant kind of jingoism, this absolutely criminal sort of jingoism that we are seeing today, where anyone who speaks is immediately uh, silenced and immediately uh, made to, uh, uh, to sort of apologize for being, uh, for speaking out on, against this kind of narrative. Uh, what I also wanted to flag, really, for today's discussion is to look at the kind of stumbling blocks for peace in South Asia. We are dealing with one of the most highly militarized areas in the world. But apart from the fact that large sections of South Asia are very highly militarized, we also have the countries of South Asia who have faced the havoc of war and have faced what we think of or we talk of as low intensity conflict for several years, for several decades in fact. Now in this process, governments of these countries of South Asia have had to deploy vast budgets, 
for defense. And this has severely compromised the resources that we have for health, for public education, and for whatever it takes to lead a decent life in, this, in these countries. But apart from this, there are severe conflicts over natural resources. There are struggles over river waters, about sharing of river waters, over power. Migration is a major issue. And with the question of people in search of employment, with issues of the refugees, which is a real actual humanitarian crisis that we are seeing across the borders of many of these countries. We do not even come close to discussing all of this. Now, when we, when we talk, therefore, of peace, we really need to understand what kind of peace we are talking about. Are we speaking of a peace which is, which is you know, the kind of cultural, shared cultural uh, identities and solidarities that we look at, the language, the, uh, the shared music and the food and everything else, the literature, the poetry, or are we also talking about a peace that is forged out of mutual respect and caring, out of some kind of understanding that the true strength of all these countries of South Asia will really be in the well-being of the peoples of these countries. Um, where do we even begin? We have, you know, to our um, great fortune, we do have Admiral Ramdas to be able to help us to navigate some of these issues. Um, as you already heard from your uh, introduction, uh, Admiral Ramdas has seen conflict. He has actually fought in the war, in, um, in the uh, uh, nine, uh, 71 war. But he has been someone who has advocated peace and anti-nuclearization of this entire uh, zone. I'm sorry you all have to stay awake in the afternoon. <laughs> Uh, but uh, that's because I finish my sleep before I come. <laughs> anyway, this uh, subject that I'm supposed to talk about is on uh, peace in Asia. Yeah. You know, India is big enough, but to think of Asia is really too much. But anyway, I think it's important. You might well ask, uh, what am I talking about peace, man of war, you know? It's a, yes, we all have to turn chapters. You know, when you read a book, you go from one chapter to the other to the other. In my case, it was something little more than having turned a chapter because towards the fag end of my career, um, not fag end, in fact, quite, quite a bit of my uh, last few years in the Navy, I was already quite convinced that wars don't win anything. Um, having been through two actual of them with uh, losing friends here and there, and at the same time um, having to go through the whole exercise, which we did, especially in 71, and uh, there's lakhs and lakhs of refugees pouring into our own country from East Pakistan at that time, now of course Bangladesh. And uh, it was a, altogether a very sad scene. And at the end of it, what did we achieve? There's Bangladesh. And on this side, you know, there's a very narrow thing called the, the neck or narrow neck going from uh, uh, the Western Bengal into Assam. You know, it's called the corridor, neck corridor. It's really only about 45, 50 miles, kilometers wide. And uh, just on the other side is China, this side is Bangladesh, and this side is India, and on the other side is Assam, you know. So it's a, altogether it's a crazy kind of uh, job. But anyway, that happened. We dutifully went and signed the uh, Shibla agreement. 
And then business as usual, you know. Play till the next round. Thank God there's been no next round, but there have been many rounds. Many rounds. <coughs> you might well ask, uh, what am I doing here with uh, Having been really a man business out at sea and uh, doing so many other things. But in my last year, when I was chief, I was also chairman chiefs of staff. So I have a pretty good idea of what goes on in the whole uh, country. And uh, I'm not trying to now reenact what Enram said this morning about some special kind of corruption. Um, I uh, never came across this special type, but obviously there must have been a type which certainly journalists knew more to be to it than we were. Or some of us were. Let me put it this way. Um, the, you know, I, I felt that this war do nothing and we spent so much money on so many things and uh, to show no ill feelings, I even had women joining the Navy in my time, which is a good thing. And now, many years down the road, it's about 26 years since I retired, and you can imagine what's the kind of uh, um, feeling that it is. It is clear to me that uh, many of our issues can easily be pulled across the table uh, by discussion. Yeah. Fortunately, we have never had that opportunity. Uh, this doesn't help. You know, every day and throughout year after year after year. And we're making monkeys out of our people. There's so many other things you can do. You need a force, yes, but you need a force which is commensurate with your own demands. And therefore, you must reduce your demands. Add some more, add some more, right? Instead of <laughs> easing things out a bit. No. Housekeeping is bad. So, you naturally gather a lot of rubbish. And we have to, therefore, <laughs> apply our mind towards housekeeping. And housekeeping will only be possible if we can attend to other things as well on an equal basis. I mean, you cannot go to the top of Mount Everest and say, Hey, Sunai Dita, this reminds me of a story I learned in, or I heard it in New York when there were two uh, I better not say what sect of the community they belong, but they were climbing up and climbing up and climbing up. So uh, halfway up, the fellow said, I have a job on it. He said, I have a job on it. Why? No, no. I have a job on it. He has a job on it. He has a job on it. It's like two chaps going up. So, finally when he got there, he said, what happened now? So he says, I forgot to go. He said, I forgot? He had climbed about 100 stories, you see. He looks on the terrace, he said, So he said, I forgot. He said, in Punjabi, sorry. He said, I forgot. So he had a look and said, Hey, what's up? He's shouting. He didn't listen to anything. He's standing down the road. So he looked at him and said, Hey, what is this? You know, <laughs> now she wants to know confidential questions. No. So, so the, uh, the thing is, the, I'm trying to say that, you know, we are more worried about so many things 
this should be there, that must be there, this must be there, this must be there. You sit across the table, talk. <laughs> वो बात बात में हमको कर क्या लेगा वो खा जाएगा नहीं नॉर आर वी गोइंग टू इटिंग अप सो फार वी हैव नॉट येट टर्न ऑल दो वेरी वे कम क्लोज टू हैविंग सम नॉन वेजिटेरियन फूड मार रहे हैं लोगों को पर वन हैज टू बी केयरफुल सो टॉक एंड इवन ड्यूरिंग द कोल्ड वॉर बिटवीन यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स एंड सोवियत यूनियन देर वॉज कंटिन्यूस टॉक्स यू वोट बिलीव इट they just sat across the table and talked and talked and talked for almost what is it 12 13 14 years from the continuous talk all we are saying is please talk and what are the main problems on the continent subcontinent india pakistan China, uh, Kashmir, China, perhaps not quite subcontinent. Then Sri Lanka down below, and uh, Bangladesh. Choti si to jaga. No, I said something else earlier, but if we as India can't manage this environment, then surely our neighbourhood management is zero. <laughs> nobody in our neighborhood is happy that we are so unhappy <laughs> and there's no need for it we just whip up ourselves get into that frame of mind there's no need and the whole peace is something which is seminal to india because without peace there can be no justice and without peace you can't have any development it is really a miracle how much we have achieved in the last 60 65 years because i was on the streets of connaught place in delhi during partition a little before partition and i know how people went mad this went killing each other it was really horrible but we live through that we died through that and many people carry a deep scar and a wound in deep inside whether it's a hindu here or a sikh here or a muslim across the border but i've been to both countries many times and i can tell you that uh, somebody asked me when i first came back from uh, my first visit to pakistan my prime minister asked me Ramu, what do you think? Uh, how are those guys? How is Musharraf? He asked me. I was already retired. I was a man happily enjoying myself, but I had gone to Pakistan. And uh, I said, "No, they are just like us. Our age, they are like them." Acha. As though there is something a news. It's a surprise. You see. <laughs> but these things happen. Uh, you go, you meet. We go all over the world, and you know. We, You know, our ships. We meet all sorts of people, all colors, all hues, all shades, all heights, all shorts, depths, everything. And uh, we meet. And you be nice and courteous. And believe it or not, they all have two eyes, two ears. And, uh, no, no, no. They're all the same, wherever they are, wherever you are. And out in the sea, we we don't even bother where the line is because you can't find any line. but still it does condition your mind to look at things in a different way you know sailors always go like this when the ship is rolling so you're also rolling so you want to, but but the point is that it shouldn't therefore screw your sight we have a thing called a gyroscope on board your own human gyroscope must keep you on an equilibrium although right now i wish i could say that with a clear <laughs> thought because i am very unequal right now. <laughs> uh, but the thing thing to remember is that if you want peace 
you will get justice. If you have justice, then you will get peace. At the same time, it is very important that peace is essential for any kind of development, any progress for anything, whether it's education, health, uh, cleanliness, uh, scoop this, scoop that, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do this. Because we have seen it over and over again, a number of places. And it is more in the head that something is wrong. We always believe, Uganda hai, ye saaf hai, ye wo hai, ye wo hai. Are, khud bhi to kaun se bade saaf ho? So this is something that we have to please understand. This is the first principle, I would say. You know, we, we have principles of war when we are out at sea. What are the principles of war? We say, principle of surprise. Principle of concentration of forces, which means all the opposition parties come together. Uh, I can't teach them principles of war. Now. But at the same time, it's very important that you should understand. Another thing is that we have to have uh, what they call uh, an element, you know, don't, uh, you know, Mao said very clearly that, you know, make noise in the north, attack from the south. <laughs> and, and so on, you know, you have to be imaginative, you have to be creative, you cannot afford to sit on your derriere and hope that things will happen. They will not happen. Certainly not in my country, because I've seen it over and over again. Even the smallest thing, it will need supervision, at least first time, second time, third time. Is it the call? It has been, oh, <laughs> good call. You know, there is a thing called dialogue, which I have not even touched upon. <laughs> <Never mind>. So, <clears throat> the thing is, if you have to have a dialogue, then it is supposed to be un what is it, my dear? Uninterrupted. Uh, uninterrupted, unlike this. <laughs> Uninterruptible also. Not just interrupt. Uninterruptible. Only, only if we do, only if we do that in real, genuine dialogue with countries, then it will work. Not suddenly halfway pull up your dhoti and say, "Nee, ya, ye to tik nii." No, that's not right. You want some questions? Ab ye ko questions bhi puchne ja rahe hain. Okay, fine. All right. <laughs> yeah, please. One small thing I forgot. It should have been at the beginning of my talk, but I forgot. <laughs> Which is that, you know, I woke up this morning feeling very good because my wife made the best announcement I could have ever wished for. I had written day before yesterday to the chief election commissioner about, uh, you know, don't parade all these military men <coughs> looking smart and fierce and <coughs> this, that and the other in your wretched uh, posters for electioneering and so on. Because I had seen, a friend of mine had seen one just outside Sassoon Dock in Bombay. Another one had seen a couple in Delhi. You might have seen some photographs. But this, late last night, and I had gone to sleep, apparently there was an announcement from the Chief Election Commissioner's office that no tasweers of fogies in uniform will be put on any of these campaigns. So, so, King Bruce and the Spider Sunaya, 
keep trying कभी ना कभी तो कुछ हो ही जाएगा so this happened and I am glad to give you and I hope it augurs well for the future I, I should say immediate future कल एक भाषण में नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने यही कहा था कि मोदी गया मतलब जिस तरीके से जब आर्मी जिस आर्मी का जो शौर्य है उसका क्रेडिट मोदी जी ने लिया लेकिन जब हम सवाल उठाते हैं हम प्रश्न उनको पूछते हैं तो तब वो उंगली दिखाते हैं सेना की तरफ और बोलते हैं आप उनके शौर्य पे प्रश्न उठाते हैं और और जब श्रेय लेने की बात आती है तो वो खुद कहते हैं और कल उनको ही कोट करता हूँ मैं कि मोदी आया मोदी मार के चला गया ये उनकी भाषण का कोट है तो ये किस तरीके से सही है कि जो वो खुद मतलब हम प्रश्न पूछे हम सवाल करे तो हम बुरे लेकिन जब श्रेय लेने की बात आई तो सरकार अच्छी है और साथ ही में सर इसको ही जोड़ के दूसरा सवाल है जब हम वायुदल के बारे में कहते हैं तो वायुदल अपनी भूमिका स्पष्ट क्यों नहीं करता कि अगर वायुदल का मानना है कि जो कुछ भी किया जा रहा है कि वायुदल जो हमला हुआ है और उसके खिलाफ जो रिटेलिएट इंडियन एयरफोर्स ने किया है तो इंडियन एयरफोर्स ने अपना एक स्टैंड लेना चाहिए कि इस तरीके का जो कुछ भी वाई इट इज नॉट टेकिंग स्टैंड कि इट शुड नॉट बी पॉलिटिसाइज माय क्वेश्चन इज रिगार्डिंग मिस्टर अजीत डोवल इंडिया इज नेशनल सिक्योरिटी एडवाइजर My question is regarding Mr. Ajit Doval, India's National Security Advisor. Uh, I, just, I just want to ask that he has said that uh, we should adopt new uh, doctrine which is called offensive defense. Is it feasible? Never before in global history before 26 February, a nuclear powers military aircraft intruded into the airspace of an another nuclear power. Yes, it spins out of hand and it triggers a nuclear holocaust. What is it? And India did exactly that. What is your comment? Nuclear holocaust. So it seems to be very honky dory that uh, peace is very uh, necessary thing for two countries or any peace between two many countries. But uh, one uh, great person has said that uh, war is the prerequisite of the peace. So in this case, actually, one narrative is not a surprise because. Uh, and one uh, one, cheese, uh, one thing is always said that uh, Mr. Modi is uh, playing his cards in election, but uh, if something uh, went wrong, he would have to take the responsibility. No person can take the credit if not not take the credit if he is not uh, accountable to anything. So if he can take the credit, he can because he was criticized for the 40 uh, army men who were killed, and he was asked to show the 56 inches in now. This so is a very repetitive because it's also been uh, asked in a similar manner by the So I'll allow one more question. Yes, from you behind you. Hello, a very good afternoon. Uh, sir, you mentioned about having a sustained and in uninterruptible. I'm here. Yeah, you talked about having a very sustained and uninterruptible dialogue with Pakistan. And uh, if we have to go by the past, could you give us examples? that we have had good dialogues with Pakistan and that has yielded results and which could serve as template for the future. That's all. Thank you. Uh, he was speaking of uninterrupted dialogue with, uh, during the Cold War. Yeah, you know, but uh, could, we, uh, could we have uh, had such dialogues you know, in the so past with Pakistan? Let me give the example for, in, for Pakistan here. Mohit Bhagavat claimed that he can mobilize the, you know, Swayam Shaivats in three days <laughs> to fight the enemy country. So what is your take on that? I think you have raised a lot of turbulence in me. <laughs> but uh, since this is a, a bouquet of questions, and you heard Mr. Javed Akhtar said, Hare Kul Alag Alag Hota. So, although I understand, I appreciate the questions are different, but two or three things I had overlooked, but now that the questions have come, I better say something. <coughs> We are all talking about the nuclear exchange or likely exchange or that could be happened. It could have. Because when any aeroplane breaks my airspace, 
whether it is here or out at sea, it means you have violated my airspace. You may say, I came chasing after this fellow and I came chasing after that robber and all that. But the point is, you have violated my airspace. So now, it could have resulted in anything. Particularly since we were, and we are, both countries armed with nuclear mass destruction weapons, so-called tactical weapons, and so-called, I won't say so-called. We, we have a submarine launch strategic ballistic missile. Now, we have tremendous capability. We can destroy this whole planet 20 times. <laughs> but I'm sure you and I don't want to do that. So, but you still run the risks. I won't go into for more detail right now. There's a thing called fire on command and there's one fire on <coughs> launch. So if you get enough time between launch and the actual thing landing on your <coughs> then we will all be vaporized. We'll all get we'll get free elevation. <laughs> and uh, please don't think that this is a joke because it is too serious. <coughs> People from Hiroshima are still struggling. Ibakushas who come from there. Let us not underestimate the nuclear weapon. It is deadly, deadly serious. If one had dropped near Bombay, Bombay would have been said, adios. Chutti ho jati aapke maari maari lecture bhi khatam ho jati. But they go, you want Navy to take over responsibility. Who said that? Uske koi Navy ke ko? Air Force. Air Force. Unke ko ye to nahi lage hai? Kya bolte hai? Si. Ya apne gai bains ke ko hi ho san? Singa, singa. Nobody has horns. You select the right person for the right job. Simple. How does it matter? Now, this selection depends on your If you're lucky, you will get a good choice. If you don't get, if you're not lucky, you will get a bad choice. Kya humare sab neta sab bade bhaskalas hai? Kyun re? Hum bhi chunte hai na? Yehi hota hai. See, election, selection, it's all. Something very similar, semi close. Depends on the system. What what system you have, which proves the correct answer. And you know, I don't want to now get into dive into democracy because that is going to be a completely a big ocean to swim because uh, it's too complex. Each country chooses what it's good for it. We have chosen something which I, in my view, has been absolutely splendid. Our constitution is one of the finest in the world. I can tell you that. Because it is a great leveler. It puts everybody on par. You start off, everybody is batting without any handicap. You shouldn't be. If you are, then the bookkeepers are not doing a good job. So, that's that. So, there's nothing like Air Force, Navy, Army, anybody. Whoever. We've all got strategic weapons. We have a strategic command. A chief of the strategic command at the moment. Clearly, it is better that the guy is sitting ashore rather than sitting on a submarine. You understand why? 
Because submarine is a, what they call a survival strike capability. Your whole country can be gone, but that submarine will be all right in the samundar. That's where I'm going to be. <laughs> so, you know, these are things that, yeah, it's a question of luck. I mean, we don't work on that basis. Nobody does. Nobody does. And uh, if you have to go, you go. If you don't go, you don't go. So, and believe it or not, all of us sitting here will go one day. Uh, uh, you know, we're talking about principle for peace. She said, she reminded me. You know, at one time, good 10, 15 years ago, I thought I will write about principles of peace. Uh, then I refrained. I said, I'm too young and too, too much of a novice to do anything. Uh, I said, I need much more experience and interaction with people. Uh, people with that much more experience and uh, knowledge. And uh, I will say that I moved in that direction, then I stepped back. Because I felt that uh, it's not being true to that task. Because I think you see, the principles of war are one thing, that is how to win a battle for whatever circumstances you are given. And the principles of war will more or less, it doesn't mean you have to actually take out a saber and a go rattling, but it, it does mean that you have to follow certain principles, understand. Peace too, you have to follow certain principles. The basic overriding principle for peace is that you want to make peace. You, you genuinely believe in peace. That is very important. And, uh, I cannot overemphasize. See, once you have shown a will to do something, it will happen. Believe me, it will happen. Uh, you may miss it maybe once at blue moon, but uh, it will happen if you are determined to get it. It is like a, you just wish yourself to get it and you will get it. Because at the moment what happens is very few people really apply themselves to what they have chosen to do. And if you don't do that, you know, you don't succeed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. you are absolutely right. Uh, we are both, we have these countries which are armed to the teeth and we still have to choose peace and that is something that we should really want to choose and I think that's absolutely the most important thing for all of us here We've been listening in on this discussion. Um, thank you so much. And uh, I'm sure there are a lot of other questions that people will ask you later. But for the moment, you know.